Aurora TV. The world is thinking. How is it that the richness of the physical world, the world that you see, that you hear, that you smell, a world that is composed of physical properties, wavelengths of light, frequencies of sound, chemical structures, can actually be represented in a brain that consists only of neurons, and these neurons can only vary in two parameters. That is, their, their ability to fire in time and space. This is truly an astonishing problem, and a problem that we will not solve. And the problem, perhaps, is well illustrated in this painting. This is not a nose. It is a portrayal by the Belgian surrealist René Magritte of his own brain's representation of the external world. It is a vignette of image and reality locked in mutual cancellation. Now, the problem as to, way, as, as to the way in which the physical world is represented in the brain is not only a creative force in art, it is central to our understanding of philosophy, psychology, and neuroscience. And it is the way in which the olfactory world is represented in the brain that we'll talk about this evening. Now, why olfaction? In humans, smell is often viewed as an aesthetic sense, as a sense capable of eliciting enduring thoughts and memories. But smell is the primal sense. For most organisms, it is that sense that affords them the ability to detect food, predators, and mates. Smell is the cent central sensory modality by which most organisms communicate with the environment. Evolutionarily, it is the most primitive sense. But whether smell is primal or aesthetic, whether it is conscious or non-conscious, all organisms, from bacteria to man, have the ability to detect chemicals in their environment, and those with a brain then have the necessity of transmitting this information to the brain, where it must be processed to create an internal representation of the external world.